tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege again and the opportunity to come before your presence again. Thank you for what you've done in our midst this week. And Lord, what you've done in our midst this morning. And Lord, we thank you in advance what you're going to do in our midst tonight. Lord, bless the song service. Bless the praise and worshipers as they worship. Uh, lead us in worship tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, anoint Brother Hanks as he ministers tonight. Anoint the special music tonight as they sing tonight, Lord. Just anoint everyone with the mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we pray that thy perfect will would be done tonight, Lord. And we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing and let's worship the Lord tonight. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, so glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. If you are saved tonight, you have a reason to rejoice and give him praise. Hallelujah. If you are a Christian in this place, you should be glad. You should have that joy of the Lord deep down within your soul. I've come to bless the Lord tonight. Have you come to bless his name? Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus, the 
sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There's healing in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of the Lord. Yes, there's healing in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Jesus, bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. There's joy in the name of Jesus, joy in the name of the Lord. Yes, there's joy in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There's victory in the name of Jesus, victory in the name of the Lord. There's victory in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. There's love in the name of Jesus, love in the name of the Lord. Yes, there's love in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Salvation in the name of Jesus, salvation in the name of the Lord, salvation in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Well, deliverance in the name of Jesus, deliverance in the name of the Lord, deliverance in the name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There truly is something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Something about that name that the world can't offer us. There's nothing like the joy and the peace and the deliverance of Jesus. Oh. 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Oh, oh, oh shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Touch us, Lord. I want to see you. Open, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, listen to that part. To see him high and lifted up tonight. To see him high and lifted up. Oh, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 oh, is holy, 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 I want to see you. Oh, would you just lift your hands and love the Lord for that tonight? Father, we thank you that truly we can be in your house to give praise and honor and glory to you in my prayers tonight that you will open up our hearts, God, that we will see ourselves uh, as you see us. Lord, I want to see your presence. And, Lord, I want to feel your power. I want to know without a doubt, God, that it has been good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Lead us and guide us and direct us uh, in all that we do tonight. And we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. 
glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. What a joy it is to have you with us on a Sunday night. And let me just say at the very beginning of this service, thank you for those that have already asked about uh, the First Lady. She is doing better this afternoon, was able to eat a little bit this afternoon right as I was leaving about 4.30, headed back to church. And as she is resting again tonight, and so just continue to pray for her, that God will strengthen her and uh, raise her back up. Um, I need her to be back in church and well. Amen? So uh, you remember her tonight, that God will strengthen her and be with her. Let me also share with you, we had an urgent request come in this afternoon. Brother and Sister Brinson were with us this morning, and they were uh, pre they're preaching tonight in Fort Meade at his home church, the Cornerstone Church. Brother and Sister Renfro were supposed to go with them this evening, um, but Sister Renfro took a fall this afternoon at um, her mother-in-law's house, Brother Renfro's mama's house, and has broken two bones in her arm, and she is scheduled to have surgery at 9 o'clock, 9 to 9.30 this evening. And uh, they got to clean out some of the fragments and possibly put place two plates in Sister Renfro's arm this evening. And uh, I've been in contact with Pastor Renfro and with one of his daughters. And I think Ruby and AJ may still be at the hospital. They're there with them. And uh, so I told Pastor Renfro that we would take time tonight to call upon the name of the Lord on behalf of Sister Renfro's uh, need. I know God's able just to calm, calm her. He's able to touch the pain. He's able to give the physicians direction tonight and that this surgery will go well and that her recovery will be expeditious and I just believe God's able to do that amen I'm going to ask you right where you're at do you mind standing with me as the family of God Pastor Renfro Sister Renfro a part of us let's just call upon the name of the Lord on behalf of Sister Renfro that God will strengthen her tonight Father we love you tonight thank you for the word of the Lord that is still true and alive and well today Father we bring Lord Sister Renfro's need to you and Father I thank you for being with her today I I just pray as we bind together as the family of God, Lord, that you'll reach down right now into South Lake Hospital. God, that you'll touch her. Lord, let any pain that she may be experiencing, Lord, let it subside under the authority of the word of the Lord tonight. Father, I pray any swelling, God, will be under control. Lord, I pray any discomfort will be gone. I pray any anxiety or concern that she may have, Lord, will be replaced by the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost, the peace that passes all understanding. I pray that you'll be with Pastor Renfro tonight. God, just be with him and calm him and strengthen him, God. Be with those family members that are there. God, guide the hands of the physicians even this hour. God, let them be able to do what needs to be done quickly. God, we pray for her recovery. We pray for her rehab. And Father, we just pray tonight that you will move and minister in a mighty way on her life. Thank you for the Renfros tonight. Thank you for their love for the church and their love for the people of God, their passion for Christ. I pray, God, is there now in a time of need. I pray, God, that this church will lift them up. Lord, and the hand of God will not be short from them, but the hand of God will reach down into that hospital room and bring comfort and peace even as we pray this time. Lord, also touch my wife tonight. Strengthen her. Thank you for what you've done already in her body. I'm believing for a complete healing. Lord, that when we wake to see morning, it'll be a brand new day. Lord, this day is gone and we're trusting you that healing will be accomplished in her body. Thank you for what you're going to do for us around this place tonight and we'll forever give you the praise, the honor and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus we pray and, and this body said amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. I had a one of Sister Hanks to testify a few services ago, and our schedule and their schedule has been crazy, and they weren't supposed to be here this morning. They were going to be out of town, and that changed, and they slid in, and my mind was going 90 different directions uh, uh, with Sister Wendy being out and uh, trying to make sure we were okay on music and making a few changes, and, and some of you had called this morning, and you were out sick. We were trying to get Sunday school classes covered, and, uh, and, and I just didn't get to it this morning, but I don't want to go another service without her publicly testifying she shared this with some of you, but publicly testifying that God is still a healer. Amen. And why am I doing it tonight? Because we have a couple of needs in our church right now that I know God can move upon. And this is going to build our faith and help us. And, and I don't know. You want to come to this pulpit? Oh, come on to this pulpit. You'll be all right. Uh, come on up this way. And uh, will you welcome Sister Hanks as she comes and ministers to you tonight? She's going to testify of the good. Now, my wife is probably watching. You, you can take this over there. My wife. I don't need a test. I don't need a microphone. Y'all know that. 
But God has just been so good and so real. And, you know, I just get, I'm just so humbled by the goodness of the Lord and what he has done in my life just recently. And uh, I had had some pain in my jaw. And I know some of I've testified to some of you already, but I said, Lord, if you heal me, you know I will tell it everywhere I go. And I have shared this testimony when we were up in Live Oak a couple of weeks ago. And, and uh you know, I, I just want to glorify God and, and give Him the glory and the praise. But uh, I had had some jaw pain in my, in my, on my left jaw, and it just kept getting worse. And I thought maybe I'd lost a filling or something. So I went to my dentist and uh, got in the chair. They examined me and everything, and there was no fillings missing. There was no cavities, nothing. But there was a big ulcerated sore on the inside of my gum next to my tongue. And I didn't even realize that I couldn't see back that far. But they took a picture of it, and I saw it, and uh, they said there's bone exposed. And uh, I didn't know this till later, till I went to the oral surgeon, that that is the thin, the skin is the thinnest on that part of it, of your body, of any place else, even on your eyes. That's the skin is the thinnest there. But they said there is no way that it will grow back over. You will have to go to an oral surgeon, and they will have to they will clean it out send some off to pathology to see if there if it's anything and they will have to suture it up it will not grow back the the place was of where the bone was exposed my primary doctor put me on antibiotic and i can and it, there was a long process and i won't go into all of it. it's too much detail but it took a period of time with insurance and different things but god delayed and long enough i was in contact with several different people with insurance different different people that and telling them my situation and i've gone back to them now several of them and told them that god healed me because i went i, I kept feeling back there with my tongue i could feel it rough right up until the morning that i went to the oil surgeon and when i went I went in, I prayed that morning, I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to have to have surgery, I don't want to have to, uh, you know, I want you to heal this for the glory of God, I want to be able to have a testimony to praise you and to lift you up and encourage somebody else and build somebody else's faith, well, through this, God built, was building in my faith and working on my faith for other things, and so anyway, I went to the, I got up, that, I went in after I prayed, I brushed my teeth, and I felt back there, and it felt smooth, and immediately I said, Lord, you have healed me, and I knew right then, and I got in my car and I praised the Lord all the way to Lake Mary from my house. And I just praised the Lord. I said, God, I know you've healed me. I know you. I just thank you for healing me. And I got there and I walked in and the, and the uh, oral surgeon, he said, well, how are you doing today? I said, I'm doing wonderful. And I said, I'm just here. I'm expecting a good report. And so when he began to examine me and he was telling the nurse to bed, she was typing everything, you know, as he was examining and doing different things. And he said, no bone exposure, no further treatment needed. And I could have just come out of that chair, but I already knew. But God is just so good and so wonderful. And, you know, I, 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 just, I just thank God. He's just so good. And not only that, different things he's, he's done and, and, uh, in our lives and different prayers he's answered. And, and I, I, I don't want to take a lot of time, but I do want to give God the glory, and I've testified to others. But, you know, at the beginning of the Daniel fast, um, I, I've been on diet coats for a long time, and I, my husband, he's always been after me to get off of them and everything. But, you know, I, I just went cold turkey and went off the diet coats. And God, I've not craved one. I've not wanted one. I've not desired one as normally I would have. And God delivered me from those. And I had told my friend earlier, I said, you know, God's going to have to help me with this because I can't just quit these by myself. But, you know, that's a simple thing to you, but that's a big thing to me, that God did that. And no headaches or nothing. But that 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 one night I was spending the night right after that spending the night with my friend down in, in Groveland I was taking her to the lot the next morning I woke up in the wee hours of the morning with a splitting headache and I mean it was like knives going through my head and I said I did not have anything with me any ibuprofen or anything with, with me and she was sleeping and she's older and I didn't want to wake her up to see and I didn't know where she kept hers but you know I fell back off to sleep and I woke up and just a little bit I woke up again it was still just like I mean that's like knives stuck into my head I said Lord I don't have anything to take for this and I know God that just like you healed my mouth God you're able to heal this headache and you know I dozed back off and when I woke up that headache was gone and I didn't take anything and I have not had a headache since and that's been weeks ago you know, God is just so good. God has done so much for me here lately, and, and, and I'm nothing. And if he'll do it for me, and I'm nothing, how, how he'll do it for anybody. Because God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. And little Kayla, you know, she, she was diagnosed with the, the worst kind of flu uh, Wednesday morning. By Wednesday evening, she was, after we had prayer for her here in church, God 
uh, healed her. And, and, and she was able to eat. And they said it would be a week before she would even be feeling better. And, but she, she's, uh, she went out yesterday, went out to eat for her birthday. And she's doing wonderful. And, you know, that's just the blessings of God. And that's just how good our God is. He'll do it for any of us. And I just love him and appreciate him and thank God for all that he does for us. As she was testifying, it reminded me of that old song that simply says, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Amen. I'm going to make it to heaven somehow. Hallelujah. So glad that you're in the house of the Lord with us tonight. Don't forget about next Sunday mornings, our Vision Sunday. I'll be sharing with you some of the things the Lord has placed before me for this new year that we are in. And uh, we're back to somewhat of a regular schedule this week. Wednesday night will be uh, Wednesday night meals and Wednesday night classes. And I think there's youth choir practice on Saturday night. I, I'm, I'm going off my memory here and drama practice and then next Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month can you believe our uh, Tuesday starts March already can you believe that we are almost two months out of this uh, new year already it's hard to believe but I'm so thankful for the mercy and the grace of God I'm gonna ask uh, the ushers to go ahead and come and wait upon you give you an opportunity to worship with your giving tonight uh, our offerings will be going to our operating fund thank you for your faithfulness I don't have all the results of the uh, monthly finances this month but it looks like our revival week financially was very solid able to take care of the men of God and bless them in special ways and and we can't do that without you and I don't ever want to take for granted what you give to the Lord that helps us do ministry here and let's just do that again tonight and ask God to be with us in a special special way father we love you tonight thank you for the testimony Lord thank you for the faith that it builds inside of us I truly believe that in the year of 2016 Lord you're still able to heal people divinely you are a healer, and I am thankful for that tonight. I pray as we come to this part of worship, to bless the offering tonight. Multiply it. Lord, let it continue to help us meet the obligations of our church. Bless our families, God, and just continue to move on them, and we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Amen. Thank you for your giving tonight. And Brother Billy and Sister Nikki are coming to minister to you in song. While they're coming, let me remind you that are going to SEYC with us tonight, or not tonight, we're not leaving tonight, that are going to SEYC with us in a few weeks, that tonight while you're in service, if you have not finished uh, paying your monies that are due, uh, they're all due, I think it's on Tuesday, March 1st. And uh, some of you had asked Rebecca to put your name on the list that you wanted to go, but she's heard nothing from you since that day. There's three or four of you. So we're trying to figure out if you're going with us or not. So if you will just go by and check in with Pastor Rebecca and let her know, hey, I'm going, I'll bring you the money Wednesday night, or no, I'm not going because of whatever. We just want to make sure we have 
plenty of seats on our bus. If you uh, have been contemplating you wanting to go and not sure if you're going, we've got room. Now, we've got about, it looks like about 10 or 12 spots left on our bus, and I'm thankful for that. It needs to be uh, as full as it can be, but if you're going and haven't confirmed with her, please do that, and it uh, looks like uh, in just a few days we'll be taking that trip, and thank you for that. Hallelujah. I guess there's a whole bunch of them singing tonight. Amen. Proud of this family and what God's doing in their life. Worship with them as they minister to you in song tonight. I just want to say thank you to the Lord for everything that he has done for me and my family. <clears throat> Looking for answers. You need a way out. You've been trapped in that trial. Full of sorrow and doubt. Saw a trickle of sunlight. But you found no escape. Just hold on to his promises. Said that he'd make a way. He'll make a way. In the middle of nowhere. When it seems no one really cares. He's there by your side. He'll make a way. When you feel Satan closing, don't, don't give up, don't give in, and make, make a way right on time. Standing at the Red Sea, with no place to go, Pharaoh's army was closing in. They soon overthrow Right out of nowhere Came a mighty strong hand He rolled back the waters And made a way out again He'll make a way in the middle of nowhere When it seems no one really cares He's there by your side He'll make a way When you feel Satan closing Don't give up, don't give in Make a way right on time. Oh, he'll make a way. In the middle of nowhere When it seems no one really cares He's there by your side He'll make a way When you feel Satan closing Don't you give up, don't give in you make a way right on time. No, no, don't you give up, don't give in. You make a way right on time. Aren't you glad we serve a God that's never late? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Our youth choir is coming around to sing to us tonight just before the man of God comes and brings the word of the Lord. And uh, uh, I didn't mean to scare folks this afternoon. I was uh, asked uh, when they saw I posted that Papa Hanks was preaching tonight. Uh, I was asked when I got to, is Sister Wendy okay? Did something bad happen? Uh, you didn't announce that this morning. He's pre- I know she's fine. Uh, I just talked to him after service this morning and asked if he was able to preach tonight, and he was. And it's always good to have Papa Hanks home, and I know he will uh, preach the Word of God to us tonight. And so this youth choir is going to sing, and then after they finish, uh, this, uh, this man of God is going to come and preach. And will you go ahead and make Brother Hanks and Sister Hanks feel welcome as our guest speakers tonight? And uh, they're home folks, and... Uh, they've been here uh, as long as some of you have and longer than most of us have and uh, we're just delighted that they're home tonight and uh, let's worship with this youth choir they've done a fabulous job this week in revival tonight's going to be no different and then following them Papa Hanks will come and minister the word of the Lord to us
living with Jesus in Canaan right now. Anybody remember that song? Woo, hallelujah. That's one of my favorites. I first got saved, Vestal Goodman was hot to trot in those days, and and uh, she had a, a young guy, I can't remember his name now, and uh, he, he, he joined the Happy Goodmans, and he could sing higher than her. And they had a, we were over at the Bob Carr Auditorium one night, they were singing, and they had a singing duel. I'm telling you what, I mean, I don't know, whoo, Lord, they got up there. But that, that was the song they were singing. I always loved that song. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord on Sunday oh, night? Yeah. Isn't it good to be saved? Anybody saved here tonight? Anybody in love with Jesus here tonight? Anybody on your way to heaven here tonight? Woo, anybody excited about it? <laughs> oh, man, we'll notify your face. <laughs> Just teasing, hallelujah. What a joy to be in, in church in Okoy on Sunday night. Wow, uh, it's been a while since I've been home, but it's been good. This week's been good. I enjoyed the revival. I appreciate the blessings of the Lord. I don't know about you, but that youth choir blessing my heart. Man, Sister Cherith has done a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job with them, and I appreciate that. I am very, very proud of our young people. Praise God. Some of us older folks will get on fire like they are, but we can have church around here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I don't want them to outdo me. Praise God. I, when I go on those mission trips, I'm usually the old man, the oldest one, but I don't ever let them young bucks outdo me. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. They call me the Energizer Bunny. Praise God. I still got it. Praise God. Amen. I, I want to get in with them, and I want to worship the Lord. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, young people, for all that you're doing for the Lord. It's good to have all of you with us tonight. If you're visiting, we're delighted you're here. Sister Wendy may be visiting with us via the Internet. We're glad to have her. And, uh, Sister Wendy, I've been praying hard for you today. And the Lord's still in the healing business. So we're just believing the Lord's going to touch her and help her tonight. Others have been sick in their body. Sister Renfro needs the touch of God. But I just believe, as Sister Hanks has so well said, the Lord is still on the throne. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can even ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I told you the other night I was sick, had all that creeping crud, I call it. I don't know what it is. And just rough, couldn't even lay down in the bed. Uh, but I crawled out to that, that office in my backyard. Got a little Ted shed out there in the backyard and made me an office out of it. I crawled over there, and, and I got to praying, and the Lord come into that little shed and touched me on Monday evening and uh, healed me, to miraculously healed me. I mean, it went away just like that. It was gone, and uh, never, never coughed again. God just man unbelievably touched me so I know he's still in the healing business tonight well did you come to have church amen, amen. have your Bibles First Chronicles chapter 4 First Chronicles chapter 4 good to have brother Larry Robinson with us he's been here before he's not really a stranger he preached here the other Wednesday night but I, I sure do love him him and I've been buddies for well, forever almost, haven't we? It's been, been a long, long time. He pastored uh, some churches up in North Carolina, and I preached for him up there and preached for his daddy-in-law, preached his daddy-in-law's funeral. Amen. We, we, we've been that close of friends through the years, and I appreciate them so much. Good to have him with us and all of you tonight. Some of you haven't seen in a while. It is a joy and delight to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. First Chronicles chapter 4. We're going to read verse, not begin reading there in verse 9, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Now, if you're a Bible scholar, when I said that, you cringed. Why? Because this is the genealogies. <laughs> How many like genealogies? That's what I thought. None of us like genealogies. And so and so begat so and so. Who cares? I mean, I can't even pronounce some of their names, so who cares? <laughs> but we're right in the middle of that, and God just lays one on us. Verse 9, if you there, say amen. amen. And Jabez, everybody say Jabez, was more honorable. Everybody say honorable than his brethren. That's amazing. He was a cut above everybody around him. You know what? I know this is unpopular and surely unlived in our generation, but I'm telling you, if you're going to make it in the rapture, you're going to be a cut above those around you. 
Amen. God called us to be different in this world. It seems like the church is trying to become like the world and the world like the church. But I'm telling you, if we're going to be ready, Jesus, when Jesus comes, we're going to have to be a cut above. He was more honorable. We'll get to that later, hopefully. And uh, then his brethren and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Now, this wasn't a, a selfish prayer. Some people have looked at it that way, but it wasn't a selfish prayer. For notice what he said, that you would enlarge my coast. In other words, Lord, make my borders bigger. He wasn't looking for land. He was looking for souls. Huh? I believe some of us need some bigger borders. Come on, amen. I mean, your border is your room. That's it, your house. That's all you're interested in. I think some of us need some bigger borders. Pastor's going to cast vision next week. We need some bigger borders in Okoy. Come on, amen. We need to, to do more than we've been doing lately for the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, enlarge my coast and that thou, thine hand might be with me. In other words, Lord, I need your touch. There's nothing wrong with praying that. I, I, I'm going to pray it in a minute. I need God's touch on my life. And if you're going to be effective for the Lord, you need God's touch on your life too and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Wow. And Jesus taught us to pray that, didn't he? Huh? This wasn't a selfish prayer. This was a prayer for God to really help him. That, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I hope all of us can say that before we go home tonight. God granted us our prayer. Notice, and God granted him that which he requested. Now, uh, I don't know, probably 20 years ago, I'm not sure. A lot of years ago, a man made this guy pretty famous and his name was Bruce Wilkinson and he talked about the prayer of Jabez I'm not I'm not going in that direction tonight um, but he became a household word in that generation at least and he's been forgotten again by a lot of people but uh, I was reading just reading through the scriptures there I do that every year just like every hopefully everybody does and I was just reading through there and I, I just come across it and it just burned in my heart and the Lord began to talk to me I want to preach tonight if the Lord will help me on more than mediocre. More than mediocre. And the tragedy of our generation is we've settled for mediocrity. Amen. America has settled for mediocrity. And the church has settled for mediocrity. That's a far cry from that early church. When you read the book of Acts and you compare it with the church of today, the there's no comparison. I don't want to be that way. I want to be like they were. How about you? More than mediocre. Would you lift your hand to heaven and ask the Lord to touch us and help us tonight? Father, what a joy it is to be home, to be in the house of the Lord, to be able to love, worship, honor, bless, and glorify the name of the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the mighty one of Israel, the great God Jehovah, who is eternal, immortal, invisible, and the only wise God, and to who belongs glory and honor and power and might and majesty and dominion. Lord, we give you that praise and honor and glory tonight. Thank you for your great love and mercy. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the word of the living God. Thank you for your power. Let it be manifest in this place tonight. Lord, there's a great desire and hunger and belief in my heart that you're going to do something great around this altar. I believe that somebody tonight is going to get a touch from heaven that they, like they've never had before. Somebody is going to pray through. Somebody is going to be stirred and revived and blessed. Oh, God, help us here tonight. Let us leave the same way we came. Let the fire of God be kindled in our heart. God, give us a desire to be more than mediocre in this final day. Stir up our hearts now. Bless our lives, and we'll give you praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. <coughs> more than mediocre. You know, if there's one word that I believe would describe our generation, it would be uh, the word apathetic. <laughs> apathetic. <laughs> the word apathy literally means a lack of passion, compassion, emotion, or excitement. Uh, I tell them sometimes, uh, you're as exciting as spam. I don't like spam. Amen. I eat about anything, but I don't eat 
big spam, not unless I have to. Hallelujah. There's no excitement in that. It's blah. It's no good. I mean, it's just, to me, it has no appeal at all. That's what apathy is. There's no compassion or passion or emotion or excitement. I was reading here some time ago about some instances that have taken place across America that shows us that America has become a very apathetic nation. I was reading about a lady in Ohio. She was driving down the road, came to a river, and lost control of her car. And she went through the guardrail and down into the river, and she got out of her car, got on top of it, and began to scream for help, begging those that stopped. Many of them stopped. And they were watching her in the river, and she's begging them to help her. And she's screaming, I can't swim. I don't know how to swim. Please, somebody help me. And they stood there, and they watched that lady drown. She died because nobody would help her. They were apathetic. Amen. They just stood by and watched her die. I read about another place where I believe it was Nashville, Tennessee, and a lady was walking down the street, and she's nine months pregnant, and she went into labor. I mean, full labor right there on the street. She laid down on the sidewalk and began to beg people to help her. <laughs> Amen. Beg somebody to help her. A taxi driver saw her, pulled over to the side, rolled the window down, and when he heard her screaming for help uh, and begging for somebody to deliver a baby, he, he sped off and left her there. Uh, another lady came out, an elderly woman uh, knelt down beside her, tried to help her. She needed some rags, some towels, uh, went into a hotel right there and begged them to just give her some towels. Uh, they wouldn't even give her any towels. Uh, she had the baby on the sidewalk apathetic. I mean, nobody cared. It seemed like nobody wanted to help her. You know, in Chicago, it's so bad there. Apathy is so bad there that Chicago Tribune has a, a file in the filing system. It's called, there's so many cases that they call it the file of apathy or the apathetic file. There's just hundreds and hundreds of those that are in there because nobody seems to care anymore. One guy summed it up. He said the epitaph of our society should be this civilization died because it just didn't care Woo, Lord, and I, you know, that's terrible because I'm an American and I want to help folks. I, I want to be a blessing to my neighbor and to whoever. I want to help them. But that spirit is gripping America. But sadly, not only is it gripping America, church, it's gripping the church of the living God. The church of the living God has come to the place that we're apathetic. That we don't have any life or excitement anymore. We just drag in and drag up and drag through and drag out of the house of God. We're not excited. We're not enthused. We're not on fire like we ought to be. I'm telling you, God is not interested in that. I'm afraid it's gripping not only America, but you and I who love God. Most of the church tonight is satisfied where they are with God. See, some of you have been in the same spiritual condition for the last 20 years. Amen. I've been here. I know. I've been around this church a long, long time. 42 years to be exact. I've watched some of you and you're in the same spiritual condition or worse than you were 42 years ago. Amen. You just got to the point where you don't care. You're not excited. You're not stirred. You don't want any more of God. That's a very, very dangerous place for you and I to get in the spiritual realm. Most of the church is no longer excited about God or the things of God. They've lost their passion for Him and they've lost their passion for others. If we're not careful, we'll become apathetic in our walk with God and we'll end up by living mediocre lives at the best. But I want to I want to tell you that is not God's will for your life. Woo! God didn't save me to sit on a pew and do nothing. God saved me to give me the most exciting life in this world. Ooh, hallelujah. And he has. I'm telling you, Brother Larry, he has. I went down to visit with my oldest sister this weekend, Friday evening and Saturday, and uh, their daughter uh, was there. So she is the meteor one of the meteorologists for Channel 2, NBC Channel 2 in Fort Myers, Florida. Well, she works from 3 in the morning till 11. So Saturday she got off at 11, and we went to lunch together. And uh, uh, we she brought up missions when she 
she was just a, a young girl, probably what, 11 or 12 years old. Uh, her and Rachel went with me and her mother and her dad. Uh, they were a doctor and a nurse and they went with me to Ecuador uh, uh, to do a mission deal, a, me a medical mission trip. And she brought that up and she said, Uncle Harold, uh, you know, I, I think about that all the time. And I think about how that, uh, what we did and how we helped those people. And she said, I want to do that again. And so we just started talking about missions. And after a while, she said, wow, you've had an amazing life, haven't you? I said, I have. Hallelujah. 47, soon to be 48 countries uh, that I've been in. I'm telling you, God didn't save me uh, to sit on a pew and do nothing. God didn't save me to come to church uh, three times a week uh, and go through the motion of religion. Uh, he chose me to make a difference uh, in the world. Uh, he doesn't want me to be apathetic. Uh, he wants me to be energetic for him. Uh, he wants me to be so in love with him uh, that everything else takes a back seat. Uh, and God is alive in my heart. Uh, if you've lost that, uh, then you've left your first love. Uh, and you need to go back and get it tonight. Uh, you need to get in this order and beg God to stir your heart one more time uh, and let you fall in love with him all over again. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. He wants us to have an abundant life. Brother Dillard sent me a, an outline this morning. We've been uh, communicating back and forth recently and he sent me an outline this morning and uh, he was excited. I mean, uh, he was really stirred up. Uh, he had come across something that had really stirred up his heart. Uh, he said, I've been reading uh, uh, Gibbons' book, uh, Edward Gibbons, a great uh, uh, British historian. Maybe you heard of him. Uh, he wrote a book called The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. Very interesting book. Uh, if you ever get a chance, uh, you may want to try and read that. Uh, very, very powerful book. Uh, in that book, uh, he gave five reasons why the early church uh, just blew everything out of the water. Uh, why they were so powerful uh, and why they won so many souls uh, and how why they had such an unbelievable effect on the whole world. Think about it. Within a hundred years of Calvary, 20%, over 20% of the world had been converted to Jesus. Think about that. Without a television or radio, without any kind, without a truck, without a PA system, without none of the modern conveniences, 20% of the world was born again. I mean, that was true. Some of the most terrible persecution that the world has ever known. But the more they persecuted them, the more they thrived. The harder they fought against them, the harder they fought for Jesus. And they took 20% of the world's population for Christ. In our generation, with all of our modern conveniences, less than 2% of the world's population is born again tonight. You know what's wrong? There's something wrong with that picture. We've become apathetic. We've lost our zeal and our desire to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm praying God help us. He said in the book, given gives five reasons for the rapid growth of the New Testament church. And the first one is the one I wanted to tell you about. He said the first reason, the first one he listed was the zeal of the early Christians. He said they were so zealous for the Lord that they literally turned their world upside down for Jesus. I said, oh God, God, will you pour some of that on us in our generation? God, will you stir our hearts until we realize that it's our job to win the world to Jesus Christ? Somebody help me preach tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, does that sound like the modern church? No. They just want to go to church once a week and, 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 and want the preacher to preach uh, something real nice and make them feel good about themselves. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's the way they are. But I, I, I want to do better than that. Are you zealous for the Lord? I mean, that early church, uh, the zeal of the Lord was burning in their heart. And that zeal caused them uh, to reach that world with the gospel of Christ. Are you zealous? for the Lord. I mean really, really zealous for the Lord. Are you turning your word up, world upside down for Jesus? If you're not, then you're not really doing what God wants you to do. So listen up tonight. I want to inspire you, if I can, to do better. That's, that's my point tonight. That's my desire. I want to inspire us tonight, Okoy, just to do better. Okay? I think we can do better. <laughs> Amen. My, I just thought about an old story I heard about years ago. just popped in my mind, so I'll share it with you. A fella had a dog that 
run coyotes. He was the best dog in the country running coyotes. So somebody heard about it. And they decided they wanted to see that dog run. So they called this man up and said, We heard you have the best coyote running dog in the country. He said, Well, that's what they say. He said, Man, I'd love to see that dog run. He said, Well, come on over and we'll run him. So the guy went over to the old gentleman's house and got in the old pickup truck, put the dog in the dog box and drove out into the countryside, just big rolling hills out there, open pastures, and said, there's a lot of coyotes. We shouldn't have no problem finding one today. Sure enough, to turn the old dog loose, and it wasn't very long, he struck on the trail of a coyote. And all of a sudden, they saw that coyote jump up out of the grass and take off. Man, that dog was right on him, man. I mean, he was letting it fly. And the old fellow said, man, he is doing good. Old fellow said, yeah, but he ain't doing his best. I mean, that dog's laying with that coyote. He said, man, I'm telling you, that old dog's doing good. He said, yeah, but he ain't doing his best. And the guy was puzzled. After a while, went over the hill out of sight. And in a few minutes, they just stood there. In a few minutes, Brother Roger, all of a sudden, here they come back. Only this time, the coyote is chasing the dog instead of the dog chasing the coyote. Amen. And the owner punched his friend in the ribs and said, Now he's doing his best. <laughs> See, sometimes we think we're doing pretty good, but we're not doing our best. See, we should never do anything less than our best for Jesus. I mean, what if he would have given us less than his best? Brother Rick, we wouldn't be here tonight. We'd be lost. We need to give our best to the Lord. We need to be more than mediocre. So I want to inspire you tonight. Now in our text we find here in First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 and, and it's right in the midst, li middle of the list of genealogies and I, I feel like Clarence McCartney. He's a just an old, old, old way, old timey preacher. This is what he said. He said, tables of genealogies make dull reading. <laughs> How many can say amen to that? <laughs> yeah. He said most of the time we just skip over them and that is especially true of the first of uh, nine chapters of First Chronicles. How many chapters did you say, Brother Hanks? Nine. <laughs> Just nine? <laughs> That's all. In those nine chapters, guess what? There are over 500 names. <laughs> Woo! And most of them, we can't even pronounce them. <laughs> and so what do we do? We just skip over them. But if you skip over them, you miss chapter 4 and verse 9 because right in the middle of all of those names we have an astonishing statement there a sentence it said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren wow man I read that a few days ago and my heart just leaped up and I said wow and it's like the spirit of God just pierced my heart and I backed up and read it again and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren man I mean, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. I said, Lord, there's got to be something to that. I started just digging into that. I want to share it with you tonight. Notice what it said. He was more honorable than who? His brethren, those that were around him. What a testimony. This is a young man, but what a testimony. He was a cut above everybody around him. I want to talk to you young people out of my heart. God wants you to be a cut above those around you. He wants you to be different than the rest of the world. He wants you to dress different and talk different and act different and be different. Amen. He wants you to be so in love with Jesus that nothing else will matter to you. All you want to do is please the Lord. And he wants you to find the will of God. And he just wants you to do it with every bit of strength and energy you have in your body. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Don't wait till you get old. Don't wait till it's too late. But use your talent and ability for the Lord while you're young. What a testimony of this amazing young man. He was more honorable than all of those that were around him. In other words, Jabez refused to be like everybody else. Come on, help me preach right here. Jabez refused to be like everybody else. He refused to live an ordinary or mediocre life. He chose something better. You see, life is made up of the sum total of our choices. I'm preaching good. Life is the sum total of our choices. We can choose to do good or bad. We can choose to live right or wrong. We can choose to be happy or sad. We can choose to work for God or not work for God. We can choose to be dedicated and consecrated or we can choose not to be. It's our choice. Jabez says, I'm making a better choice. I'm making a bigger choice. I am not going to be like everybody around me. I am going to be different. So he refused to be ordinary or mediocre. We need to be just like him. We need to refuse to be like everybody else around us. And we need to refuse to live an ordinary or mediocre life. Jabez makes me want to give God my very best. When I read that, it inspired me. I mean, it stirred up my heart. I wanted to do more for the Lord. It makes me want to shun mediocrity. Hallelujah. I don't want to be just a mediocre guy. I want to do more than that. He makes me want to despise the ordinary and seek the extraordinary. God wants to do extraordinary things through your life. But you have to choose to let him do that. Somebody say amen. Today we get saved, satisfied, and petrified. <coughs> Don't we? <laughs> we get saved, satisfied, and petrified. <clears throat> when I was a kid, we went out west and we went to the petrified forest. Now, I thought that was interesting because them petrified rocks were absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> Unbelievable. But they ain't so pretty in church. They're just not pretty in church. God didn't save us and sanctify us to petrify us. He saved us and sanctified us. And as pastor preaches more and wants to fill us with the Holy Ghost so we can be world changers. So we can turn our world upside down for Jesus so that we can make a difference. Somebody say amen. amen. Today we join the church and maybe pay tithes and maybe come Sunday morning and if we're really, if a pastor's really lucky, maybe come back Sunday night and uh, the really, really faithful few come on Wednesday night and, and that's pretty much our life. That's pretty much the way it is. We never really do anything of any importance for God. Now, wasn't going to say this, but I, I just felt that little twinge in the spirit, so I'm going to say it. I appreciate every worker in this church. Pastor does too. I can tell you, he tells me. He tells me about you guys. I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate Sister Rebecca. She doesn't just help him. She helps me, and she helps all of us, doesn't she? Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate Brother Kevin in the nursing home ministry. Huh? I appreciate the ladies' ministries, the men's ministries. I appreciate Sister Cherith. She cleans the church. Others help her clean the church. And I appreciate all the teachers in our school. I appreciate everybody. But listen, printing the bulletin is not really what God called us to do. Cleaning the church isn't really our ministry. Hello. Teaching Sunday school isn't all of our ministry. It's kind of like the little boy whose dad died. And Mama, he got up to be a teenager and Mama was having trouble with him. 
His uncle lived on a farm out in the Midwest, and so he, she called him up one day, and she says, I'm having trouble with this boy, and said, I don't know what to do with him, and said, uh, he really needs a dad, but his dad's gone, as you know, and said, I'd really like for you to take him for the summer and see if you could help me with him. The uncle said, I'll be glad to take him, no problem. So he caught a train out into the Midwest. His uncle met him at the depot, got him in the old pickup truck, went down to the Western Wear store, went in, said, son, we're going to buy you some real clothes. Got him some Levi jeans. Yeah. Got him some good cowboy boots. Yeah. Got him some chambray shirts. Yeah. Got him a cowboy hat. And then eased around to the back of the store. And got him some rubber boots. Man, he felt like the king of the walk. They got to his uncle's house and his aunt said, Man, you ain't never seen food like that. I mean, cat head biscuits. Some of you ain't got a clue what that is. Does anybody know what a cat head biscuit is? Hold your hand up. One, two, three, four, five. Bless your pea picking hearts. How can you live all your life and not eat cat head biscuits? I mean, just had a spread on. He said, I sat down and I ate till my sides about busted. He said, Well, son. It's getting late. We better go to bed. We got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> Eight o'clock. That's late. He knew the boy was thinking, man, are you kidding? I don't go to bed before 11 or 12. <laughs> but he went anyway. They went to bed at 4.30 in the morning. Heard a knock on his door. Said, son, time to get up. We got to do chores. He drug out of the bed. He got his shoes on, or his shirt on, and his pants on. And his uncle said, Where are your, where are your rubber boots this morning, son? He got his little rubber boots on. And they went down to the barn. And they started slopping the hogs, and feeding the chickens, and milking the cow, and giving out hay, and doing all the stuff that you do on a farm. They worked for an hour or so. They got it all done. He said, Now, boy, let's go get us some breakfast. They went up to the house and said, Lord, she done done it again. Cat had biscuits again and said gravy and, and, and eggs and sausage and man, I'm making some of you so hungry. <laughs> he said, man, I child down. He said, man, I was feeling so good and I was so full and that, that homemade jelly was the best I ever put in my mouth. And said, when I got that last bite down, my uncle stood up and said, All right, son, let's go to the field. It's time to go to work. <laughs> and the kid was shocked. And he said, What do you mean go to work? We've already worked. <laughs> and his uncle looked at him, Sister Debbie, and said, No, son. We've just done chores. Said the real work is out in the harvest fields. You know what cleaning the church is? Chores. You know what printing the bulletin is? Chores. You know what cutting the grass is? The real work is out in the harvest field. And that's where God wants you and I. That's where God wants us to work. And He doesn't want us to go after it with a mediocre, half-hearted, ordinary spirit. He wants us to go after it like our heads on fire. Amen. He wants us to be different. David Gibbs said to Christian, he was a Christian lawyer, he said, most Christians want to blend in with the crowd, live the good life, die and go to heaven. <laughs> That's about the truth, isn't it? But not Jabez. Not him. 
boy, I sure want to be like Jabez tonight. He didn't want to be ordinary or mediocre. He wanted God to help him do great things through him and for him. So should we. So should we. See, our problem is we're too much like the duck I read about last week. The duck was flying south for the winter. And one evening he was looking for a place to roost. He flew over a barnyard and he looked down and there was a bunch of tame ducks in the barnyard. He said, man, this might be a good place to spend the night. So he flew down there and landed in the barnyard and a little while later the farmer come out and started feeding all the ducks. Man, he said, I ate all I wanted. He got to thinking about it. Man, this is pretty good. So they got it a whole lot easier than I do. So they don't even have to fly. They don't have to do anything. And somebody brings food and throws it out to them. So I think I'll just hang out here for a while. And so he hung out there for a few days. And the farmer kept feeding him. And he kept getting fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter until he couldn't fly no more. Uh -huh. Amen. And the next time uh, the migration started, uh, he looked up uh, and he saw all the mother ducks flying over his head uh, and down in the side of him. Uh, there was a stirring, uh, but he couldn't do anything about it uh, because now he was fat and lazy. Uh, and so he died in the barnyard. Uh, one fellow summed up his life like this. Uh, he's a pretty good duck uh, for the shape he's in, uh, but he isn't the duck uh, that he might have been. And I read that I said, oh, God, please, don't let me be like that. Don't let that be the epitaph on my gravestone that I'm not the duck I could have been. Lord, help me to be everything that I can be for you. Help me to do everything I can do for the Lord. I want to be like Jabez. I want to make a difference about you. Now, if we're gonna if we're gonna do that, if we're gonna let God use us and be like Jabez, then there's some things we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to be like Jabez was. What was he? First of all, Jabez had to overcome some painful circumstances. <laughs> boy, we just don't like pain, do we? <laughs> Did I tell you about the little boy? Preacher. He wanted to take up the offering. He just wanted to take up the offering. So he begged the pastor, Preacher, let me take up the offering, please. It's all right, son. Well, the pastor got up, made an impassioned plea for the offering and said, We really have a need and we need you to give till it hurts. He said, All right, ushers. Go ahead and take up the offering. Little boy's walking down the aisle, comes up to one of the deacons and hands him the offering plate. And the old deacon flipped a quarter in there in the offering plate started to hand the plate to the guy next to him. And the little boy looked at him and said, My Lord, mister, you can't take much pain, can you? <laughs> we don't like pain, do we? I mean, I like myself pretty good. I don't like hurting. I don't like pain. I don't like agony. But sometimes it is. See, the name Jabez means painful or sorrowful. Now, we don't know why his mother named him that. Some believe that they named him that because she had a hard time in her labor, in delivery. But many others believe that it wasn't that, but that Jabez was born with a handicap. Wow. Well, maybe he was. So if he was, guess what? Life hadn't been so good to him, had it? Guess what? Hate to tell you, but sometimes life just isn't fair, is it? Sometimes it's just not fair. No matter how good you live or how much you love God, sometimes things don't always go the way you want them to go. Life isn't always fair. Sometimes life brings you troubles and heartaches and trials and burdens, but it's what we do when they come that will make the difference in the outcome of our lives. Listen to me carefully now. We can let our troubles and trials make us bitter, or we can let them make us better. We're back to choices, aren't we? Bitter or bitter or 
No, you can't talk. Bitter or... Oh, better. Better. Jabez, let them make him better, not bitter. So did Fanny J. Crosby. I was reading about her a couple weeks ago. just really blessed my heart. Uh, she was blind, you know. And uh, I never did know how she went blind, so I was reading about that. And it was just interesting. When she was six weeks old, she got pneumonia. And the doctor, all the pus and stuff is coming out of her eyes, so the doctor prescribed a poultice uh, for her mother to put on her eyes to try to help them. And there was something in that poultice that affected the nerves in her eyes, the retinas of her eyes, and Fanny J. Crosby ended up being blind. Well, she never really let that get her down, did she? If you know about her, she grew up and she got married and she got pregnant and had a little baby. They were excited, man. They were thrilled to death. But one morning, when that baby was three or four months old, she went in and found her baby dead in the crib. Now, I don't know, but to me, that would be a hard pill to swallow. What did Fanny Crosby do? Give up on God? Blame the Lord? No, this is what she wrote. Oh, what a happy soul I am. Although I cannot see, I'm resolved that in this world contented I shall be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind. I cannot. And I won't. Blindness never stopped her. She wrote over 8,000 gospel songs and hymns and over 1,000 poems. See, she chose to let it make her better instead of bitter. She chose to be an overcomer just like Jabez did. He didn't let his problems stop him from being all that God wanted him to be. You know, I met a lot of people along this trail of life and I get to witnessing to them, Brother Billy, and uh, uh, I talk to them about the Lord. Do you know anything about the Lord? Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, if you give your life to him, no, 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 I don't want nothing to do with God. Well, why not? Mine, he's the greatest thing in the world. No, no, no. He let my dad die. He let my baby die. He did this. He did that. He did the other. On and on and on and on. They're mad at God. They're angry at God. And because they're angry at God, they refuse to serve Him and love Him. Listen, let me tell you, if you're here tonight and you're mad at God, let me just give you a little advice. Don't do that no more. If you want to blame somebody for your troubles and your problems, then blame the devil. Remember, there was no sin, sorrow, pain, or death until the devil showed up in the Garden of Eden. Come on. It wasn't God's fault. It was the devil's fault. So if you want to blame somebody, don't blame God. Blame the one that you ought to blame. Blame the devil. You see, there is a purpose in our pain. Think about it. Candles could not give us light unless they're burned. Unless they're burned. Think about it. Coal has to be burned to give us heat, doesn't it? And grapes have to be crushed to give us grape juice. Come on, say amen. Weed has to be crushed to give us bread. There's a purpose in the pain if you're here tonight and you're going through some hard time, some rough place, some harsh thing. Just lift your hands and your heart and your voice to the Lord and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is worthy of our praise. It was the devil that caused sin, the devil that caused sorrow, the devil that causes pain and agony. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. God is a good God and he is worthy of our praise. Somebody say amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I got a hurry second. Not only uh, uh, did Jabez have to overcome his sorrow but he lived a life of purity. The word honorable here means a man of convictions, moral character, or purity. That is a very uh, uh, bad thing in this generation. A, a very lacking commodity in a lot of people's lives. Come on, they don't live pure holy, consecrated, dedicated, moral lives. They have no convictions anymore. See, when I got saved, when I, 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 you could go in that church, you could feel it. 
Brother Steve, you could feel conviction. Man, when you walked in the door, you could feel it. I don't feel that anymore. I don't feel that anymore. Somebody asked me one day, said, Brother Hanks, how come you don't feel conviction anymore? I said, because there's no convictions in the house of God. What do people have to be convicted of? Most of the church is just like the world anyway. Amen. There's no conviction because there's no convictions. I'm telling you, Jabez was a man of moral purity and convictions. If you want God to bless you, then live right and love God with all your heart. Matthew 6, 33, 11. They call it the blessability verse, the blessability verse. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the key. We have to seek the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. And when we do that, honey, look out God is going to be able to bless us. Third, we're going to have to have a real passion for God. You see, Jabez was passionate about God. He wanted God to bless him. So he would not just be an ordinary or mediocre person. He wanted to experience great things from God and he wanted to do great things for God. That ought to be the passion of our heart. I said that ought to be the passion of every believer's heart in this place. Are you passionate about the Lord tonight? Are you passionate about serving God? Or have you, are you, as pastor said this morning, have you let the fizzle sizzle? Amen. Or the sizzle fizzle rather. Have you done that? A lot of people have I remember a day when some of you were really on fire for God. I remember a day when you were closer to the Lord than you are tonight. I remember when you couldn't wait to get in the house of God. You couldn't wait to get in the choir and lift your hands and your voice and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But now the passion is gone and now you just come and sit and you never get in. Oh, Jabez was passionate about the Lord. And then you need to do the last thing that caused God to bless Jabez. That is, Jabez was a prayerful man. He prayed. But he didn't just pray. He prayed passionately for God to bless him. See, if you want God to bless you tonight, you're going to have to pray. James said, you have not because what? You ask not. So if you're going to get anything from the Lord in the altar tonight, somebody's going to have to pray. You're going to have to ask God for what you need. Now, Brother uh, Robert preached on the Holy Ghost the other night, and uh, he quoted a scripture. I want to I clarify that for you, if you'll allow me. He said, He giveth the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Ask Him. Now, it's more than just open your mouth and saying, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. It's more than that. Go home and look up the word ask in your strongest concordance. Uh, you'll discover something very interesting. Uh, it is a very strong and powerful word in the Greek language. Uh, it literally means uh, to seek with all of your heart uh, to the point of begging, begging, begging. Amen. It's more than just saying, Lord, here I am. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's getting so desperate for him and so hungry for him and so desirous to be filled with him that you're willing to get to the point that you're willing to beg God, God, I can't live another day. I can't go another hour without being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me when you get down to business and you become that passionate about being filled with the Spirit. I can promise you it ain't going to be long. The Holy Ghost is going to come in. I said the Holy Ghost is going to come in. God is going to fill you with the power that the pastor preached to us about this morning. And we're going to be a witness in God to God in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. We're not going to sit on a pew and go through the motion. We're going to be alive. We're going to be on fire. We're going to be filled with power in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to make a difference in our world. Somebody raise your and, and magnify God in this place. Woo! Hallelujah. Stand with me all over the house. Stand with me all over the house. Come on, chair. Oh, he was passionate. He prayed passionately. And God heard his prayer. 
and God gave him every petition that he desired. I'm telling you, you can have what you need tonight. You can have what you need tonight. In this altar, if you come and pray passionately, if you call to God with all of your heart, you can have what you need in this altar tonight. A young man was troubled in his soul. And he knew he needed God. So he went to visit the old man of God, the old preacher. He said, man of God, I need God. How, how, how can I have God? He said, son, come and go with me. The old preacher got him in the car, drove down to the river, got out of the car, said, follow me, son. The old preacher got out of the car and walked right out in the middle of the river. He looked around, the young man was coming behind him. When he got out, it helped about their neck. The old preacher just reached over and grabbed him by the neck, by the neck of the Roger, and just crammed his head under the water and held it under. And he just held him under, and the bubbles were coming up, and his hands were flailing, and his feet were kicking. Amen. And he just kept holding him under, and holding him under, and he's flailing and flailing. And about the time he quit kicking and flailing, the preacher let him up. And when he came up, he came up spitting water out and gasping for air. Amen. And that's when he got his senses back. He looked at the old man of God and he said, Preacher, what in the world does that have to do with finding God? He said, Son, when I was holding you under, what did you want more than anything in this world? He said, Preacher, I wanted some air. He said, When you want God as bad as you wanted air, you'll find him. Hallelujah. When you want God as bad as you wanted that air, you'll find him. I went to God tonight, and we were hungry, that hungry for God. Sinner, if you're here tonight, when you get hungry for God, as bad as that boy was hungry for air, you'll come to this altar and you'll pray through. If you're here tonight, and you're battling with sin in your life, you're battling with habits, you're battling with things that are hurting you spiritually, when you get hungry to be sanctified, as that boy was, for that air, you'll get sanctified in this altar. When you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, as bad as that boy wanted to go from there, you'll pray through the Holy Ghost. When you want to get healed or delivered or on fire or filled with joy, whatever you need, when you have a hunger for it, as much as that boy did for that air, God will give you what you need. Jabez prayed passionately and God heard his prayer and God gave him everything he asked for. What do you need tonight? What are you looking for tonight? Amen. What do you need God to do for you tonight? Whatever it is, it's in this altar. It's in this altar. If you're here tonight and you have a need, I want you to just come and stand across this front. We're going to do it just like we did the other night. From side to side, front to back. Come on. Come on. Some of you need to get closer to the Lord. Some of you